Okay, with the Dura and Dura Assist bike racks, the first step that you're going to take when you're putting it together is assembling parts B and parts A together. This is the top plate of the rack and the main assembly of the rack. There is a set of four carriage bolts and these are located in the box with the top plate. These are going to be the fasteners that we use to attach these two pieces together. We're going to toss everything around and put the parts together and show you how to bolt them down. You're going to use a 13 millimeter socket and if you have an extension this is a great time to utilize that as well just with a normal socket drive. These are the specialty tools listed on the parts list but if you have just an open-ended box wrench or an adjustable wrench you can still put these pieces together but this is going to be the ideal tool to make this easier for you. Alright we're going to move some things around and make some space to show you how this is done. Alright, one great way to do this is to take the mast of the rack and we're going to actually tip it upside down and set it down on top of the top plate in the upside down position. So I'm going to take out the four carriage bolts. And I'm going to take the nuts off of these carriage bolts and set them aside. take all four of these bolts and there are square holes in the top of the top plate we're just going to drop those down into each of those holes right like so then we're going to take the top plate holding all four of the bolts in place flip it upside down and now we've got all four bolts lined up through the top plate we'll do our best to hold those while we set this down one thing you want to be careful not to do is do this on carpet, because if you do this on carpet and then you tighten these bolts down, you'll end up with carpet attached to the bottom of the top plate. Uh, I've done that, and uh, it's a mess, and then you have to undo the bolts and get it back up. So don't do that, but uh, clean, uh, clean, solid uh, countertop or the garage floor or uh, some linoleum or tile, just don't do it on the carpet. Okay, so grab your mast, and before you do this, Reach in here, grab the cable lock, and just pull it out of its stowage position from when it was shipped. Because uh, once you attach the top plate, you're not going to be able to remove that back out very easily, and you may find yourself wondering where the top plate uh, cable lock is. Alright, so this auto lock goes towards the vehicle, which goes towards the hitch bar. So I'm going to take this part of the rack, set it down just like this, and look for each of my bolts inside. It's a little bit difficult for you to see, but I have now lined this up. I'll see if I can tip it up. Well, I can't tip it up because then the bolts fall out. So you have to trust me that the rack is sitting on those four carriage bolts. I'm going to take the washer and the nut for each bolt and put that on there just so that it's hand tight. Once I do that, then I can kind of move this around and get it into a position to work in. washer and nut for each carriage bolt. And the last of four. Okay, I've got those all hand tight. So now I can spin this thing around. As you can see, I can lift it up and it finds its home back where we want it. So, in here there are four bolts, if you can see them. Our wrench is going to drop onto one of them, and the only thing you need to be careful of is to make sure that the carriage bolt itself is sitting in the square recess. So you want this to be flush on one side, and the fact that I'm rocking it up and down and showing you is making this a little bit more difficult, but this will give you the idea. There we go, the back one's happy. The front one is a little grumpy. This might self-correct too when we turn on it. There it did. So what happened there is uh, the carriage bolt side wasn't flush as the as it is on this side, and I just turned the nut and then it oriented the bolt right into the square carriage cut on the top of the top plate and sort of self-righted its its ship. 
So we're going to tighten these in equal manner so that we're not tightening one of them all the way down. Similar to how you would tighten the lugs on your car tire or on your car wheels. Sorry. And then I'm going to spin this around. And we've got the same thing going on over here. You see it's kind of rocking up and down. It's going to settle down right there. So when I turned that, it turned the bolt and the carriage bolt kind of oriented itself into position and nested down into the carriage cut on the top plate. The only thing you want to be careful of here is that you don't drop this big heavy thing on your head or your cat or uh, your small children that are running around. So just be mindful of this. It's, you know, it's a bike rack so it has some weight to it. Um, if you have a second person who can help you, this might be a great time to do it. If you're working on the floor, uh, maybe prop this against a chair or something. It's really nice and easy in this well-lit, uh, high-benched space, but uh, when you're working down on the floor, just be mindful of this. You don't want to bonk your head. I don't have any experience doing that, but someone I met once told me to do that. And one thing that you might run into here is that your socket may not be deep enough to get the last couple turns on here. Uh, if that's the case, a box wrench is going to be the best way to finish it or a slightly taller and deeper socket. Uh, if you don't have a metric socket set, the closest SAE equivalent is a half inch and they'll both work on these nuts. One thing to consider about carriage bolts is you can certainly apply too much torque to them that you spin the heads off of them. These are rated carriage bolts, so they're very strong, but it's not impossible for you to apply too much torque to them and break the, the bolt. So just be mindful of how much torque you're applying to it. It certainly makes more sense to tighten these uh, once a season rather than to take them to their lifetime required torque. See, there it is, right in my head. Be mindful of that, it's heavy. Alright, and one last bolt. more tempting fade here. And you'll notice I'm not even using all of the wrench here to get those tight. But if you had done this on carpet, now you would find that everything is stuck to the carpet. But fortunately, we've got this nice tabletop, we've got everything assembled. This is actually ready to go onto your vehicle if you've got a two inch receiver hitch. So for our sake, we're going to go out in the rain now and get this installed on our vehicle. But that is how to assemble a Dura or Dura Assist bike rack in terms of putting the top plate onto the main rack assembly. Thanks for taking a look at this. To see more video content, visit softride.com slash video.